Basic maintenance and vein replacement for a Becker Dry running rotary vein pump. Inspection of the vein height and wear is essential for proper pump maintenance and maximum pump performance. Using Becker Genuine Replacement Parts ensures that you get the correct part. Manufactured with the precision and durability required to maximize the life of your pump. While performing maintenance on the pump, the unit must be disconnected from the power supply for your safety. If the pump has enough clearance to perform maintenance, it can be performed at the site. If there is not enough clearance, the pump should be sent to the Becker Factory Repair Center in Ohio or to a local Becker Authorized Repair Center for service. All parts and appropriate tools should be on hand before starting maintenance. When ordering the maintenance kit, include the pump type and serial number on the order to ensure the required parts are correct. The first step when servicing the unit is to unscrew the plastic cover. After removal of the cover, disconnect the grease line, only on the VTLF series. Loosen the bolts from the end shield, also known as the cylinder cover, and remove the cover. To remove the side cover, take two of the removed bolts and screw them into the threaded holes found on the end shield face. This will allow you to pry the end shield away from the cylinder. Thoroughly clean the pins and rotor shaft to avoid any contaminants from getting into the cylinder, which can damage the veins. Using a caliper, measure the height of the veins and compare it to the Becker recommended minimum height. This information can be found on the maintenance label directly on the pump housing or in the technical specifications on the Becker website. Check each vein for chipped edges or cupping on the flat side of the vein. If the height of the vein is near or exceeding the recommended dimension or has signs of excessive wear, the vein needs to be replaced. In order to remove any vein dust, remove the covers. Blow out the suction chamber, exhaust port and intake port. Then blow out the cylinder while rotating the rotor. Using compressed air, blow out the inlet filter from inside out. To avoid damaging or denting the filter element, never tap it on a hard surface. Also check the condition of the gaskets under the suction cover and exhaust chamber. If the filter is too dirty, replacement is recommended. Install new veins if necessary. Refer to the original package for information regarding the size and pump type in which the veins are to be installed. Make sure the squared end of the vein goes into the rotor and the rounded beveled edge contacts the cylinder. Veins should drop freely under their own weight from the vein slots. Reattach the end shield after thoroughly cleaning the face of the rotor, end shield, and rotor shaft. Make sure the pins are aligned correctly and tighten the cover bolts. Install exhaust cover, then reconnect the grease line. Inside the filter chamber, there are two grease nipples. Remove the plastic caps from the nipples. Repack each bearing with approximately 10 grams, 20 strokes of the grease gun, with Ambligon TA-15-2 grease. Clean grease nipples of any remaining grease and replace the caps and install the filter cartridge. Replace the gasket if necessary and put the filter cover back on. The knobs are to be hand tight. Once the maintenance is complete, check to see that the rotor turns freely by removing the motor fan cover and manually turning the motor fan. If it spins freely, connect the power and bump the motor to check rotation.
The correct rotation direction arrow can be found where the motor couples to the pump. You have finished the maintenance. You may now open the valves to the vacuum lines and safely run the pump. Finish the maintenance. You may now open the valves to the vacuum lines and safely run the pump.